featuring exclusive interviews recorded live from our studio in Boston. Solutions Review presents Expert Insights, conversations with technology builders, analysts, and implementers. I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review, and welcome to Expert Insights, where we will be talking to my guest, Sean Massey, Vice President of Sales Engineers at ArcServe. Prior to ArcServe, Sean spent a decade at StorageCraft in a variety of professional service and sales roles, and earlier on in his career, spent some time on the client side as a director of IT services. Sean, thanks for being my guest today. Thanks, Doug. It's great to be here. Well, I appreciate uh, the time, and uh, I always like talking to somebody who has spoken with a lot of customers and, uh, and also uh, just has a good sense for um, what's happening at, at the macro level, because ultimately what we're trying to do uh, with this series is really get a sense for for what you're seeing out there, and uh, and I'll start off really with uh, with a pretty basic one. But you know, of of all the folks you're talking to, uh, you know, obviously uh, ArcServe is a is a data protection uh, company. But what do you see as the biggest threat uh, to the organizations you're engaged with? Yeah, you know, that's a great question, Doug, and. How I would answer that, I'm going to actually go a little bit more of a bird's eye, 40,000 foot level, is is actually the biggest danger, the biggest threat that folks have is not applying the correct importance of their data, right? And not knowing what they have in their data center or if it's, if it's hosted somewhere like the SaaS applications. And what that ends up happening is when we see bad actor threats, we see ransomware, or even the just the, I I hate saying just the traditional uh, disaster situations. Uh, When something impacts the data, it ends up impacting the organization if the organization hasn't done the things that they need to do when they identify risk, right? So the risk of, of actually losing or making that data inaccessible and not knowing that is the largest is the largest danger uh, that I see in IT today? Yeah, you know, in a previous life before Solutions Review, I was on the uh, on the marketing side years ago, and uh, and I always used to joke that the uh, the dirtiest secret in an organization, a large organization, was their data. Uh, and and despite what we all thought, uh, at least as a marketing company helping them out, uh, that you know all these companies are leveraging all this data. Um, it turns out that they're, they're just gathering it. <laughs> and, 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 and I think at this point, I mean, that certainly was years ago. Now at this point, it's almost overwhelming how much they're gathering. And, and I think, um, you know, to your point, are you seeing that, um, uh, that companies even understand where it's all coming from and, and that maybe one of the first issues is, is truly just an understanding of the inventory level of what they're gathering and and uh, and where it's coming from I, I believe that to be true you know and I think that there's um, I think we have an understanding now especially with ransomware ransomware it's you know not a matter of if it's 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 when an organization gets impacted and and ransomware is causing organizations to see how important their data is and what they need to do in order to protect that that said our our organizations now, these uh, different businesses and institutions, uh, their data may be scattered in a lot of different places. And, and you look at the advent of, of uh, software as a service application, SaaS applications, for instance, you know, Microsoft 365, I'm going to, I'll highlight just real briefly for a second. You know, folks, they think, oh, great, I'm going to go ahead and offload it. I'll get it out of my data center and we're going to handle have Microsoft handle all of that. Well, we're we're in a shared responsibility in in the SaaS applications, and it makes things a lot more complex from a, a leadership level on on the individual business or the institutions that that end up employing that. Um, and what that means is is that sometimes I think that they think, oh, everything is all taken care of. I go ahead and I I can I can use. Uh, Microsoft 365 for my exchange, for instance, and everything is being backed up. Well, in fact, it's not. And even if you look at the terms and conditions, like for instance, Microsoft, uh, they'll even tell you, hey, we're, we're going to provide 
we're going to we're going to make sure that that uh, that it's been going. You're able to access it, and we're going to do some things in order to the security of of you know help prevent things from getting inside the environment. However, that said, your data, and you need to make sure that you do the things that you need to do in order to protect it, and that includes having a third party. Um, provider with with a backup type of situation. And so with regard to the threat um, that's being posed now by bad actors, um, it strikes me as well that um, not only are, are you know companies' data sets becoming larger and maybe um, the sources are, are, are more exposed, but it strikes me now that with all the advances in machine learning, AI, and just, you know, trial and error, <laughs> that the that the threats are becoming more sophisticated. Are you seeing that as well? Um, I mean, no doubt. And and there's a couple things actually I'd like to unpack from your your question there. Uh, data is is we're in an exponential data growth mode, right? And and we're seeing that um, our analysts tell us that ninety percent of the world's data um, that we currently have was created in the last couple of years. Um, and when you when you think about that, that's just just yeah. It's all of the unstructured data pieces. It's video. It's audio. Now, of course, it's your Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and and Google Sheets, and all of that good stuff too. But it's all of this unstructured data that happens that is having the exponential growth that's out there. And then you know when you when you look at you have that data, and then you know you need to make sure you're protecting it. And then the bad acts come in. And the bad actors are getting very sophisticated. You know, uh, maybe five, six, seven, eight years ago, we we had ransomware, but in in that era, most of the ransomware infections, the ransomware bad actors were throwing out just a wide net. And, and by the way, they still do that today, where it's it's phishing, not the phishing, the pH. It's the phishing emails that 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 try to trick you into opening up an attachment or go to a, a website that that is corrupt. Uh, they're trying to do that in order to release it. And then, you know, hey, when people get infected, then they just kind of deal with that as opportunity. Now we're seeing um, organizations being targeted by ransomware folks, right? They are being being called out and they're targeted. And this often is we're seeing this in some of the manufacturing, education, government, and and medical verticals, right? As as we're doing that, and then what they're actually doing is they find a way in, and they spend their time, you know, researching and and seeing where all of the all the resources are at on the network, and they might com compromise a, a user's credentials or two, you know, in order to do that, and they wait for the most opportune time for them to, to start their attack, right? So it is sophisticated. Um, often now we, we're, we're seeing bad actors that are actually are present on a network um, to be able to do that. And, 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 and in some cases, we, you know, I, I was aware of a, a hospital system in Canada, this was a couple of years ago, they were, they were hit by ransomware. They had gone through all of the, the, the encryption pieces, and then they immediately went into restore mode, right? So they started restoring all of their machines that had been impacted, but they didn't realize that the bad actor was still on the network. So then the bad actor actually was witnessing, oh, we didn't get all the backups. So then what they were, then they tried to, they started going and then deleting machines and looking at where is all of this being orchestrated from to be able to do that? It is sophisticated and it is it is scary. Um, and if it's not pe keeping people up at night, um, it should be, right? Because we, we need to make sure that we are um, designing our systems in a way to be more resilient when, when, when something happens. It's not about data protection. Of course, you need to protect your data, but it's also about, about being resilient when something happens that you're able, it's like that rubber band. If it gets stretched out, you let it go. That's what we want our data in our networks to be able to do. 
And that's really the recovery part of the backup and disaster recovery uh, bit. Is that what you're talking about there? Absolutely. And that Absolutely. and the two do go hand in hand. And we've we've actually we we cover backup and disaster recovery uh, internally connected. Um, but I think some people think of it as different. It is different. Uh, it is different. You know, <laughs> there is. And I came from a. I I managed a data center that burnt down in in uh, 2008. And it was a small little data center at the time, and and you know um, that it was a fire that basically had taken taken that out. And at that point in time, you know we were we were doing everything that was that was right. We had offsite backups. We had um, we were backing up at the time. It was file based backup going to tape. Um, but really, when we went into the PR portion of it, it was really excruciatingly long and painful and very tedious and based on the way that we were we were we were backing things up um, that actually that event actually spurred my passion for the data protection space the backup recovery disaster recovery business continuity um, and and because of my my learnings and what I experienced over what what arguably is that the the worst eight days of my entire life of that recovery, um, of, of really kind of kind of sure that folks are are really prepared, and a lot of times people will check the box to say that they're backing up, but they've never actually tested that restore. Right? Some folks will actually test the restore, but they've never tested the catastrophic restore. I mean, basically, the catastrophic restore is to say, all right, you have nothing except your backups. How quickly can you get back up and running? And what we're seeing, you know, like for instance, coming back to ransomware, you know, um, we're seeing when when institutions, different institutions, are being targeted and they get they get impacted, you know, until they learn the scope, all of their systems go down, and then it impacts, it can impact really, you know, the U.S. You know, a few years ago we had um, an oil company in the south the southeast. A uh, part of the U.S. Um, get it, what was impacted with with uh, ransomware, and for a week, all of a sudden, gas prices in that region just just rose because because systems were down and, and not able to do so. Uh, we have a the largest meat packing um, company um, in the world actually was was hit also a, it a couple years ago, and then. All of a sudden, you know, pork and beef prices all of a sudden went skyrocketing because their systems are down and it brought everything to a standstill. So it does impact, and it unfortunately it doesn't just impact a particular business; it actually impacts all of us, right? Depending on 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 what what that company does and 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 how they they go about with their with their organization and their their market, if if you will. So within the, these organizations, um, is it your sense that prior to being hit, they believed they were protected or they were kind of whistling past the graveyard and hoping that they didn't get targeted? I, I think somewhere in between, right? So it's, I, 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 I rarely come across anyone these days that, that doesn't feel like, like they're impervious to, to being hit, right? Um, but what I do see often is folks not doing enough. And, they, and, and do you think they know that? Sometimes, yes. Um, a lot of it is it happens for good reason, right? So it could be, you know, budget. It could be time and energy and effort. Um, and, and if you haven't tested, then you really don't know how things are going to go in a recovery. Um, all together, right? If you haven't tested, you're not going to be able to do that. And and I I am a big believer of folks not just testing to make sure that they can recover a file and say, oh, yep, the backups are good. They need to make sure they're testing actually recovery of servers. I think also they also need to make sure that they are re they're testing their their DR scenario, and they should probably be doing that at least once a year. Um, how do they go about doing that? And 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 how often should they be doing that? Well, I think you you try to do it as often as you can, but I would say typically once or twice a year is is really important. Now, when I'm coaching folks through a DR test, 
like that. Um, if they've never done it before, I usually coach them to say, listen, when this falls flat on its face, please don't freak out. <laughs> um, it's, it's really good when that happens in a test. It's really bad when you fall flat on your face when it's an actual recovery, a real recovery. But the idea here is we're going to find out why things fell on its face, and then you're going to solve those, and then you're going to repeat the test so you're able to do that. So the idea with all the DR tests is number one is you're confirming that you can indeed recover from a from an adverse situation. And the second piece that you're doing is you are also learning about the challenges that you had in the recovery and then you look to fix those challenges so that every time that you do a DR test, it should always be better and better and better. You must see the look on their face when they realize <laughs> the, the vulnerability or the, or the, I mean, how, how often are you kind of seeing that kind of jaw drop and, and, and <laughs> realizing that uh, they're, they're woefully ill-prepared? Well, well, sometimes that's also the challenge too, right? And, and the challenge is <laughs> admitting I think, it, <laughs> you know, I, admit, admitting it or us actually just engaging it, right? So I think when we talk about disaster recovery, I think we have sometimes a really hard time convincing people of what that looks like because they have a hard time engaging it. What does it mean when, when it's payroll tomorrow and you don't, you don't have access to anything um, to happen. What does it mean when your systems are down and, and they're unaccessible and you don't know who, who owes you money and you don't know who you owe money to? What is that going to mean to your, to your organization? As well as, hey, can you guys still function and be able to deliver the services that people pay you for um, when, when you don't have any systems, right? So to really engage that um, is really the challenge. And it's, and it's actually, you know, once you, you see the light bulb go on when, when folks get it, and, and, then, and then sometimes they are, are frightened, um, certainly. And, and it, is, it is a frightening prospect because it has gotten a lot worse over the years as far as the threats that, that could, um, that could that, that could impact us um, in a business sense, in a business data sense. With a few minutes to go here, walk us through kind of the dance steps that somebody should be thinking about taking to, to get to a point where they feel like they at least understand their vulnerability. And then we can, you know, obviously assume that they'll call ArcServe to solve the problem. Doug, it really comes down to number one is just knowing the worth of what your data is. I mean, that that's got to be number one. And I think I think sometimes folks don't, especially, you know, leadership folks um, are, you know, leadership of companies that they, um, especially the smaller SMB space um, in particular, that they they're trusting their IT staff or they're trusting their solution provider to do everything that 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 they're doing. And I think what they need to do is they need to ask the difficult questions. They need to ask about what's going to happen when this happens. What's going to happen when this happens? And um, in terms of uh, you know, kind of relying in the organization. I mean, I think what you said is kind of interesting. This is really not necessarily should be left up to the folks that are kind of at the front line. Ultimately, it should probably be a little higher up the organization at the executive level. There should be a conversation probably that says, "Hey, you know what?" Um, we may want to put a little bit more resource against um, our resiliency. Absolutely, absolutely. To be to to have data resilience, right? To be able to come back to, hey, maybe it's ransomware that encrypts things, and maybe you're using immutable storage. You're able, you know, to 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 actually recover, and it might mean the difference between a company out of business whether they, they stay in business and, and, and succeed and thrive, right? So, so that it, the, the, stakes, the stakes are kind of high. And, and I don't mean to be an alarmist, but it is, it is something that, that every um, small business owner, medium-sized business owner or executives should be thinking about and asking the appropriate questions to, to their IT staff on, 
on what are the processes and procedures in place and where do we need to be? Yeah, that, that's, that's been great advice. Uh, and I appreciate the time uh, and, and allowing us to kind of dive into this a little bit more uh, and really understand the, the kind of broader threat and the broader challenge. Um, and of course, obviously, you know, when you are dealing with solutions, we would encourage you all to, uh, to check out ArcServe as well. But Sean, thanks very much for the time today. Very much appreciated. Uh, best of luck for the rest of the year. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it.